So, good afternoon, everybody. So, welcome to Accommodation and Operations and Management. This is Professor John Erickson Polycarpio. And for today, we are going to proceed with lesson number two, which is the bare essentials of accommodations management. So, for today's topic, we shall be discussing the following items. The basic competencies of a hotel year, the competency of managers, product knowledge, revenue and cost sensors of the hotel, hotel and resort operational cycle, and the guest room types. Our learning objectives are as follows. So we are going at the end of this lecture, students are expected to discuss the two main players of the accommodation sector, identify and explain the interrelationship of various departments in the hotel, Discuss the hotel operating cycle, which is essential in priori prioritizing tasks. Enumerate and uh, enumerate the revenue and cost sensors of the hotels. And lastly, is to enumerate the various rooms in the hotel, which are essential in performing reservations on the hotel. So, as what you can see on your screen, I am currently in Maldives. So, this is one of the uh, resorts located in the country of. Maldives, and um, this is always this has always been one of my dream destinations. I haven't been to Maldives actually, but uh, I'm planning to do so after this pandemic. So let me tell. Uh, let me start with a very basic activity. So can you tell me something about uh, this picture? So I'll give you about uh, two or three minutes to think about this. Okay, so as what you can see, these are different hotel years. These, these are different uh, hotel employees and uh, they are serving. No? So they are in, the, uh, in their full uniform and serving their guests. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the room attendant is providing towels. You can see the chef is um, uh, creating his signature dish the front desk staff is attending to the needs for check-in um, this is probably a salesperson who's contacting um, his client or her clients these are the lobby ambassadors okay they're welcoming the guest and again another room attendant who's cleaning the room now tell me what makes them a world-class hotel here so if we're going to look at this picture, it is very basic that uh, there is one word that tells us that these people are actually world-class hoteliers, and that is hospitality, world-class hospitality. So the service or the act of uh, welcoming and hosting guests and satisfying their needs and wants is very is a very basic uh requisite in order for you to become a world-class hotelier and it is basically a passion okay serving guests is it should be part of your passion okay next let's proceed to the introduction for this topic so the global hotel years meet the growing demand of the tourists so the hotelier nowadays are increasingly aware of the skills and attitudes that they need to develop in order to be abreast with the market. Um, we can say that hoteliers, uh, the, the, the new generation of hoteliers are actually people-oriented and they are into solving problems, solving uh, the problems that uh, their guests are actually encountering. Okay, Or they also have this uh, notion of being skeptic or being skeptical with the needs of their guests, okay? So, as the world market is leaning towards a competency-based management, future hotel leaders can go up the corporate ladder if they improve their skills, the skills required in their job. So, um, as you can see, there is basically um, a need for training, okay? A need to train uh, the hotel leaders, the, the future of this hotel business, and 
sino ba, sino pa ba yun kung hindi kayo, di ba? So, dapat mas ma-develop pa natin yung ating mga skills. So, what are the skills that we need to develop? So, basically, let's start with the basic competencies of global hoteliers. So, the first competency that we're going to focus is, is the self-management competency. So, under the self-management competencies, there are five sub-competencies. Number one is the self-awareness and development. So, hoteliers must always uh, be mindful about their uh, their growth. Okay, as a professional, uh, as a professional service provider in the hotel sector. So, this involves awareness of your skills and competencies, awareness of your your knowledge. Okay, and then uh, awareness of what's lacking for you, your awareness of your strengths and weaknesses, and then. Um, if given uh, chances, you have to what? You have to develop through training. Okay, so you have to move up uh, and grow as a corporate, uh, uh, sorry, as a hospitality professional by attending different trainings and seminars. Second is work-life balance. So hoteliers must focus on their work-life balance also. Uh, the demands of working in the hotel business is very high. Uh, sometimes, especially if you're working in the operations, you really have to say goodbye to your weekends. Um, even even your church days can be sacrificed. No, and most of the hoteliers are actually tagged as uh, karamihan sa kanila daw ay single. Kasi nga, um, it is really evident that the demands of uh, the work for the, the demands of the job of a hotelier is very, very high and intensive. So, as much as possible, you have to balance everything. So, uh, not just here, not just in our industry, but also in other industries and corporate uh, functions, they really have to balance uh, their personal life and their professional life also. Okay, so as you go along and you move uh, inside the, or, or as you enter the corporate world, you, you're going to understand why you really have to uh, focus on work-life balance. Next is integrity. Integrity pertaining to um, <clears throat> what's this? Your 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 uh, self-image, okay? Uh, your honesty towards your job. So hoteliers or global hoteliers are known for their integrity. And they live up to their passion of service. Next is ethical. So ethical meaning, uh, these are uh, your, uh, when we talk about uh, ethical considerations as a global hotelier, so it focus on your human behavior and it focus on doing the right thing. So hoteliers must, uh, when faced with challenges, when faced with uh, tough decisions, they really have to do the right thing in order to uh, attain this uh, positive attitude. And then there's also the personal drive and resilience. Hoteliers must understand that they have to to motivate themselves in order to, to go to work and be productive each and every day. So you must learn how to motivate yourself. And another thing is you really have to be resilient. Um, I have seen a lot of uh, memes every time na merong may ulan or merong may bagyo sa Pilipinas. Lahat tayo canceled na ang classes, canceled na yung government offices, but hotels or hoteliers still go to work because they really have to serve their guests. So, may call of duty. Okay? And because of this call of duty, they really have to be resilient in any situation, in any tough situations that they are in. Second competency focuses on your communication competency. So this focus on the first one, which is to communicate effectively. So when we talk about com to communicate effectively, you are actually being heard and you are also listening. Uh, it involves active listening and active speaking skills. Okay, so uh, communication is a two-way street. So basically, global hotel leaders knows when to talk and knows when to listen, okay? Next, there should also be a multilingual communication. Hotel gears are being trained 
to not just speak one or two languages and not just to speak on their not just speak their native language but also they are trained for a third language or even a fourth language in order for them to serve um, a specific type of market of the hotel say for instance the hotel focus on chinese market so there should be mandarin speaking front desk clerks there should be mandarin speaking fnb servers etc etc okay third competency focuses on multicultural competencies so since this is we're talking about global the characteristics of a global hotel here it focuses now on being open to different kinds of cultures so first is working effectively with different cultures you get to understand that different race different age gaps different generation gaps different colors and different uh, uh, different skin colors or different beliefs uh, can work together and you should always be open to this okay because you are in a global environment second is the consciousness on nonverbal communication elements with with different cultures okay so sometimes our nonverbal clues are being interpreted differently from other countries diba? Um, this okay sign has the, uh, a lot of uh, meanings in different countries some people say it's okay in japan it means money and then um in in brazil it's bad word no so um there are differences in terms of uh, culture and you, really, and you really have to be careful in and be conscious on some of your non-verbal clues or non-verbal communication uh methods that you will be using Fourth is teamwork competency. It pertains to uh, promoting healthy work environment. So you work in teams and make sure that you co you cooperate with your team members and there should be openness and a friendly environment in between uh, you and your colleagues. And another thing is, this is also one of the 21st century skill, which is collaboration and sharing of information. It is believed that when you collaborate, you are actually uh, improving your social skills, okay? Uh, gone are those days that you really have to keep what you know. You now, now is the time that you really have to share what you know, okay? So collaboration is always a 21st century skill. Okay, so we're back. So let's now focus on the competencies for hotel managers. So earlier, we have discussed uh, the competencies of global hotel leaders. Now we focus on being a manager or being someone who is the leader of a certain hotel or a certain um, resort. So these are the following uh, competencies that we have to focus on. Number one, human relations competency. So managers should know how to train, how to advise, and how to encourage their staff. They should not just know how, but they also know when where and what uh, training facilities or training modules does uh, every staff needs in order for them to improve their skills. Apart from that, they should also know when to advise their, uh, when to give the right advice to their staff. Okay? And they should also be encouraging. They have to motivate their staff to work okay? and uh, focus on the goal of the company. Second is basically the strategic competency. So when we talk about strategic competency, it pertains to the manager's future outlook okay, in the hotel business. So they have to see, they have to understand, they have to put critical thinking skills into the test in analyzing um, market trends. Uh, they have to understand the environment where the business is located the political concerns, okay, the, the, the industry landscape, they also have to focus on that. And they have to create, after analyzing, they have to create strategic decisions in order for them to create a huge impact on the hotel's revenue, okay? So the focus at the end of the day is the profit of the hotel. And making strategic decisions would definitely help the business to grow, okay? And when it grows, everybody in the company is happy okay so now let's proceed to the next one which is basically we have to understand the second player of the hotel industry which is the global traveler 
So as what you can see in the picture, this is how I have depicted a global traveler of today or the modern travelers. So there are five characteristics of a modern traveler. Number one is they are technology driven. Everybody now has smartphones. They have uh, different gadgets to to bring with when they are actually traveling. Then they take memories actually. Uh, they focus on memories and experiences uh, and put them in their in their small gadgets okay? uh, to be part of their uh, remembrance in a certain destination. Second, they are always focused on the value for money. They always try to to make the most of every centavo that they have, every peso that they have. So parang tayo, actually, I, I am one of, I can consider myself as one of the millennial travelers because every time I travel to destinations, I always consider uh, quality. However, I, I, I also value uh, every money that I'm spending on different um, parts of the itinerary or different uh, requirements that I will be doing while I'm traveling. Okay? So I have to focus on the value for money. Okay? So most of the modern day travelers or the global travelers of today also focus on value for money. They are also mobile travelers. When we talk about mobile travelers, it actually gave birth to the concept of leisure. Okay? So leisure, as in B-L-E-I-S-U-R-E. -E. So when we talk about leisure, it's actually a wordplay combining business and leisure. So there's a certain market that is emerging in the tourism industry, and not just in the tourism industry, but also in the hospitality sector, and that is called the leisure market. They, they really want to mix business and their leisure activities. They might be going to a certain place for, a, for an event or, or a conference, then afterwards they will put some R&Rs or rest and recreation activities. They had demand for highly personalized service. Uh, these young travelers or this uh, millennial travelers or modern day travelers actually want uh, to receive personalized service. They they want their services to be custom fitted for them. They want it unique for them. So the concept of the sim the simple concept of putting uh, or a simple gesture of putting a welcome note with their name in in their hotel room is actually it actually creates a good impact for them. Okay, um, the 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 business practice of uh, addressing your guests on their first name is actually uh, it creates a uh, it creates a, a good impression also for the modern day travelers. But for for the older ones, they would prefer to be called by their last name. Or some would just be want to be, uh, some would just be uh, or would prefer to be addressed as sir or ma'am. Okay. But for the younger travelers, they prefer to be called on their first name. Okay. Uh, there's also a growing youth segment for the global travelers. So. Um, Actually, as what you can see, uh, uh, there are a lot of travelers, or the travelers of today are are getting younger and younger. Okay, uh, it is because of the capacity to travel, mainly because their parents have this specific um, disposable income for them to travel on their own, uh, for them to allow their kids to travel. Okay, so. The, the growing youth market segment also of travel focus also on the concept of backpackers. So, itong mga nagbabackpacking natin na mga turista, they are also very uh, conscious in terms of their budget, but they want to make the, the most out of it. Okay? So, let's proceed to the different uh, revenue and cost centers of the hotel. So, when you talk about the revenue centers, these are basically the the so-called front of the house okay so why is it called front front of the house they are basically located um or they're they're they are closer to the guests okay so they are their service is actually very evident and can be seen by the guests themselves okay so that those include uh the following so that's the room department the room's department 
Okay, so the next department is actually the front desk, okay, and uh, the housekeeping, okay, those are managers' visits. Next is the food and beverage department. We also have the sales department, and the other front of the house departments such as business centers, events, convention centers, and leisure department. Okay, so they bring in the money. Okay, the revenue centers focus on bringing in the money, while the cost centers, on the other hand are uh, those that focus on the expense side of the business and controlling the expense sides as well. So this includes the marketing because they are doing promotions and publicities, engineering which involves the maintenance of the, the hotel rooms and even the hotel facilities, accounting department, they are the ones who's actually interpreting uh, the financial resources of the hotel, Human resources, they are also cost-centered because they hire people and every time that they hire, hire there is an overhead cost. Okay? And they also train, so training cost is also included in them. There's also the security department. And lastly is the administration or the executive office where the, uh, the GM or the general manager is located. <clears throat> this is the basic um hotel operational cycle as what you can see it's a uh, five part cycle which starts from the pre arrival phase up until the post departure and continues okay and continuously go into circles so the pre arrival uh, pre arrival phase this includes the reservation phase of the guest so this is the time that the guest is actually calling the hotel or booking their rooms or services of the hotel in any platforms that are available, such as phone calls, emails, reservation hotlines, um, booking engines, okay, etc., etc. The arrival phase is this is this is when the guest is actually uh, coming into the hotel. So we give uh, the best, um, this, we give the best impression on this part. So this includes the check-in phase, okay of check-in phase and then also the bell service okay then the in-stay phase this is the time that they are actually staying in the hotel so if they will be staying for two nights those two nights are actually the in-stay phase this is the time that they are using the facilities of the hotel and we really have to ensure that our facilities are up top and they are in good condition next is the departure phase the departure phase is this is when the guests are actually uh, checking out of the property. Okay, so this is the time that they settle all their bills and we actually uh, close the transaction. Okay, so that concludes the stay of the guest. Then afterwards, the post-departure. The post-departure is when the guest is actually uh, away from the, uh, the property. So the post-departure is also very essential. This is the time that the marketing people should be sending um, feedback form. They will be asking for a feedback from the guest, and then they would want to solicit advices and comments from the guests for the improvement of the hotel. And they also have to ask if they can refer or if they will be staying in the hotel again. Okay, so after the post Post departure phase. Now, if the guest will be requiring another hotel, then the guest now can make a decision and either stay again at the same hotel or look for another hotel. If they choose to stay on the same hotel, it goes back into the pre arrival phase. So, I hope this is clear to you. Uh, it's very basic on the hotel operation side. Now let's go to the different basic guest room types. There are actually four basic guest room types. We have the so-called single rooms, double rooms, twin rooms, and suite rooms. When we talk about single rooms, single rooms actually has a single bed and it is for uh, one person only. Okay, so normally the, those pad rooms and uh, studio rooms are for the single occupancy. Okay, <coughs> sorry. We have the double rooms. The double rooms are uh, bigger than the single rooms, but this time the beds are actually of double size or queen size. Okay, so yun po yung double room. Twin rooms actually has the same size, the same room size as that of uh, the double rooms. The only difference is that 
twin rooms has two single beds in it. Okay, so yung double room it has two. It only has one queen size or one double bed. For twin rooms, it has two single beds. And when we talk about suite rooms, suite rooms has a receiving area. Okay, prior to the guest room, so there is basically a foyer and uh, a living area. Okay, sometimes it also has a dining area. There are actually different categories of suites, such as executive suites, um, presidential suites, junior suites. Okay, so we'll get to discuss those uh, intricacies when we proceed to the rooms department. So those are the items that we really have to discuss for this specific uh, topic. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me your questions. Okay, so that's john.polycarpio at patch.edu.ph. And then after this video, you will be having a different set of activities. So for me to test if you have learned something from this discussion. Again, thank you very much and mabuhay ang turismo.